Hello out there to anyone watching in Twitch land. I hope uh, a few people are going to join us today. I'm Kaslyn Fields and welcome to Fields Tested. Uh, a reminder before we get started that this is an official live stream of the CNCF and as such is subject to the CNCF Code of Conduct. Please do not add anything to the chat or questions that would be in violation of that Code of Conduct. Basically, please be excellent to each other and respectful and all of that. Uh, so a little introduction to Fields Tested. Um, our goal here is to give cloud native technologies a field test. On our last episode, we explored running a personal blog on Kubernetes, but we didn't finish it. We went through um, exploring what could we run to run a personal blog on Kubernetes? And we decided to go with WordPress, which is a very common uh, tool we that is used for creating personal blogs. And then we went to uh, Docker and we started trying to figure out if we could run WordPress and Docker, which we did. And then I ran a local Minikube cluster and spun up WordPress on that and then couldn't actually reach it which was unfortunate, but anyway. So this week we are going to uh, run our WordPress in uh, a Kubernetes cluster in the cloud. And we're gonna look at what it takes to uh, actually make that something that is reachable on the internet, an actual personal blog that you can go to. Um, so that's what we'll be exploring today. Please, please, please post things in the chat and uh, let me know what you're thinking about as we go through, because uh, it's so much more fun when we all learn together and, and chat with each other. So I know I have a huge amount of fun with that. So, and please let me know if you can hear me and stuff too. Say hello, just to let me know that this is working because it wasn't last time. <laughs> I'm learning all of this as I go. Streaming is very new to me, so. Uh, feedback is very much appreciated. <laughs> uh, so we went over today's topic. Before I jump into it, I do want to remind everyone to click the follow button on this channel. If you haven't done that yet, log into Twitch and, and follow. Um, it takes 10 minutes after you follow for you to be able to interact with the chat. So if you haven't done that yet, do it now so that we can chat during the show today. And uh, let's see here. What is on the schedule this week? So here on cloudnative.tv, we try to have a show every day. Uh, my show here is on Thurs uh, every other Thursday at 1 p.m. is what I've been doing so far for my one episode. <laughs> and um, looks like tomorrow we have Raw Code on, who's going to be going over kubectl, which we're going to be using today, which is a lot of fun. How do you all pronounce that tool? There are many ways, and I think they're all awesome. And then next week, we have a full lineup of shows as well. Um, oh, and on tomorrow, we have both Raw Code going over kubectl, and a Pop is going to be going over the story of Thanos. Why do people need it? That'll be interesting. I don't know anything about that. Cool. I think that's about it for my... Uh, top of show <laughs> reminders. So let's start digging into stuff. Um, I'm going to share my screen. And I'm going to go this one. Make this bigger. OK. Hopefully you all can see that. And I'm going to change my my format here. There we go. That should be a little clearer to see. So if you all can see this, and I really hope that you can, somebody please type something in the chat so that I know things are working. <laughs> um, so if you can see this, uh, this is the Kubernetes document. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I see and I see it. That makes me feel much better. <laughs> so if you can see this, we're in the Kubernetes documentation. Um, we've got an example up here that they just have here, which is very convenient, of deploying WordPress and MySQL, something that we explored last time um, using persistent volumes in Kubernetes. So last time we just deployed this 
onto a mini cube cluster on my local machine. So this time we're gonna do that in the cloud if we can. Cool. So I have Google Cloud Platform up here. <laughs> I work at Google Cloud. So this is the tool that I have through work. I'm gonna try to point out anything along the way that's cloud specific. Uh, all of the steps to do this should be pretty consistent. You should be able to find the right tools to do it. <laughs> you know, like MySQL. <laughs> Uh, that's how I pronounce it, MySQL. Is that what you prefer? <laughs> um, uh, so uh, like I said, I'll try to point out anything that's cloud specific. You should be able to do this on just about any cloud provider locally, like we did it last time on uh, local clusters. I have a, a set of Intel NUCs that I deploy clusters on uh, locally sometimes. And I also have, uh, well, I'm, I'm about to order some Raspberry Pis, which I'm going to explore running some Kubernetes clusters on. Have you all ever run Kubernetes clusters on Raspberry Pis? I know a few people who have, but I have not done it yet, um, but I'm gonna order some and do it. Uh, but today we're gonna do it in the cloud because that's one area that I'm pretty used to in interacting with and stuff. So um, I'm making this giant so it's super easy to see, or maybe too giant. <laughs> Uh, so the first thing that we're going to need is a Kubernetes cluster. Since I'm in Google Cloud and I work with um, Google Kubernetes Engine quite a bit, I'm going to use a Google Kubernetes Engine cluster. Uh, do you all care about seeing me deploy a GKE cluster? I'm guessing probably not. Um, I already have a cluster up that I can just use. I run kubectl git node or nodes. Good point. I need to go ahead and authorize my Cloud Shell. Cloud Shell is really easy for me to work in, so that's why I'm doing that today. Um, there's a huge variety of different tools, though, that you could use <laughs> to interact with Kubernetes clusters. Oh, nice. A link to someone with a, an impressive K, it's K3s setup on Raspberry Pis. I'll have to check that out later. Um, so you can see that I've got a, a Kubernetes cluster up here. Uh, that I'm going to use today. So if I run kubectl commands, I, I get responses. I have a, uh, a few pods up and running here already, just one, I guess. <laughs> and we'll go over what that's running a little bit later. Um, but first, I want to see if I can go ahead and deploy uh, this WordPress thing that we deployed last time locally just onto this cloud-based uh, Kubernetes cluster and interact with it that way. So to do that, I'm going to follow the same steps that we followed last time. Um, uh, do, 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 do. This will be downloading the MySQL deployment configuration file. We went over last time that WordPress requires a MySQL. Is that what you prefer? We'll do that. <laughs> We're going to download the MySQL uh, deployment configuration file. Um, and then download the WordPress configuration file. We went over last time that WordPress needs a database of some sort uh, to do its work. So we're going to be deploying the database alongside WordPress into Kubernetes because that's convenient for us through this example. And all we need to do is deploy a personal blog site. So we're going to try that. And uh, add them to the customization.yaml. Trying to make sure that I didn't need to download anything else before I did this because I'm working in a new environment. Last time, if you remember, I was working in um, cloud code and on my local machine. So I already had a few things going on. Cool. We'll come back to that. I'm just going to go ahead and run this curl command in my cloud shell, which I'm working out of today, so that I'm pulling down the uh, MySQL deployment file. Uh, that we're going to use to run our database in Kubernetes. And then I'm going to pull down um, this uh, WordPress deployment, which we'll use to run our actual WordPress site, which we'll uh, use to create our personal blog site. Um, and add them to the customization.yaml file. I guess I should probably go ahead and run this one doesn't really matter which order, I guess. Um, so the first cat file we're running, or cat um, command we're running here, 
uh, we're going to create a customization.yaml file, which we'll then use to deploy our WordPress and database. And we need a secret for our uh, MySQL password. So uh, that's what that's creating there. Do, do. And we need to add uh, these resources to it, the YAML files that we just uh, got through curl. And one thing that we went over last time that I thought was really cool before I run this stuff is uh, we were going over the persistent volume claims and how persistent volumes work kind of in Kubernetes. And myself and at least one other person in the chat kind of thought that we might need to create a persistent volume uh, manifest for Kubernetes, because in Kubernetes to have persistent storage, you create a persistent volume claim that says this workload needs a persistent volume, and then uh, it, it exerts a claim on a persistent volume. Um, but this doesn't actually have a persistent volume manifest. You can see here we're defining our persistent volume claim. Um, but the way this is configured, it actually uh, kind of auto generates the persistent volume that we will be claiming, uh, which is pretty cool. So thought I'd point that out because I thought it was really cool last time. And so now it's just saying to run kubectl apply dash k. And if you remember last time or you're familiar with uh, Kubernetes at all, you'll be familiar with kubectl, which is the command line tool uh, that we use to do things with Kubernetes clusters. OK, uh, cool. So I ran kubectl apply dash k, and it created a secret, and it created a service, another service, uh, one for the WordPress, one for the MySQL. And then it created the persistent volume claims as well. and uh, we have these warnings here. This is because I'm running in Google Cloud. I'm running a GKE autopilot cluster today. So that's why you see these uh, warnings, which are saying that it's going to, well, resource requests for the deployment were not specified, uh, which is interesting. Good to know from the tutorial. So GKE autopilot clusters in Google Cloud, they um, kind of automatically choose the underlying hardware, the underlying compute uh, that your, your workloads are going to run on. Um, so whenever I deploy something into my Kubernetes cluster, I get these warnings that say autopilot is figuring out um, what compute you actually need to do that. And it might add to compute to do it. Uh, in this case, it says that resource requests were not uh, specified. So it's using some defaults, which we could go and check out there. Um, I don't care that much, so I'm not going to mess with that. But I do want to check to see if my deployments are up and running. So kubectl get deploy. Let me know if you all have any questions as I go along with this. I might be going a little too fast or something. Um, so my WordPress isn't up yet. My WordPress MySQL is not up yet. Um, it might take a couple of few seconds to a minute or two. It's already been up for a minute. so. Probably shouldn't be too much longer. If we wanted to sit here and wait and watch for them to come up, we could run dash W and there you can see them coming up, <laughs> which is good. So once that's up, if we come back over here, uh, it says that we should check out our secrets. It says that we should check out our persistent volume claim. We might as well. We tried that out last time with our mini cube cluster and we'll do it this time too. Uh, so you can see now that my WordPress MySQL and my WordPress deployments are both up uh, fully ready. So I'm going to control C out of that. And kubectl get secrets and kubectl get PVC is what it recommends right now. kubectl get secrets. Cool. So we can see here that we have our MySQL one that we created. So that's looking good. It was created two minutes ago. And then kubectl get, let's do PV first. Like I mentioned, it, it auto creates these persistent volumes. So PV is persistent volume in Kubernetes. Um, so this tells us some information about the storage that we're actually using uh, for our um, both WordPress and for MySQL. 
Um, last time we talked a little bit about how there's some, there's a folder within WordPress that you need to maintain state in. Um, the first time I tried to run a WordPress database in, or a WordPress uh, website in containers, I did not do the persistent volume for the WordPress side, only for the database. And it lost all of my images when my, uh, when I took my WordPress down to test it out. So it's very important to have that uh, persistent volume for the WordPress side, for the folders in that, as well as for the MySQL, which uh, contains some other pieces that WordPress uses. Not a WordPress expert, um, but I know that some of the things were still there when I tested it. So one recommendation I can give is if you're not quite sure what something is doing and you have the space and you can uh, test out deleting it and seeing what happens, it's a great way to understand what kinds of persistent volume needs you have. <laughs> uh, of course, you might lose things, so don't do it with something that's precious. Uh, anyway, so we've got all sorts of information about those here, and it suggested that we look at our volume claims, which would be PVC. And you can see that we've got our persistent volume claims here. We've got our persistent volumes as well as our persistent volume claims. Um, and I know that these can be kind of hard to read because the the top row of this table gets kind of uh, split across the two lines. That, that's good wording. So it <laughs> can be kind of hard to associate things. Um, I'm not going to go into much detail there. But if you find it confusing, let me know and I'll go over it. Do, do, do. So we looked at our secrets and we looked at our persistent volume claim. And we have our WordPress and our MySQL up and running. Good start. Now, our next thing is to check out our service. And we remember last time, uh, this is a uh, load balancer type service that we created. So in Google Cloud with GKE, that should automatically create me a load balancer resource in the cloud uh, that I can use an external IP to get to our uh, WordPress. When I was running it locally on Minikube, we just used our node port here in order to uh, reach the, the WordPress application that was running. So uh, note Minikube can only expose services through node port. It's exactly the situation we were in last time. The external IP would always be pending in that case. But now we're in the cloud, so this is going to be a little bit different. So kubectl get service, and it recommends uh, specifying the service name, WordPress, right? Yep. So kubectl get service, WordPress. Cool. So we can see this here. I'm going to copy my external IP and put it in a separate uh, tab in Chrome, and there we go. So now we have WordPress running in the cloud. That's awesome. I'm going to go ahead and set this up. Fields tested rocks. And um, fields tested. And give it a password. And this is fine. I'm just going to use this for this demo. Um, I don't know what email to put in. Do I have to put one in? And discourage search engines from indexing the site? I guess I'll do that. Yeah, I must provide one. OK. Um, do, 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 do. Let me decide what I'm going to do here. Let's do this. Confirm, and there we go. So I'm logging into my WordPress right now that I created. Very nice. If I log in, oh, now I have to go to my login because I've created an account. I went to WordPress for the first time uh, since we deployed it onto our Kubernetes cluster. And I created an account. I named it Fields Tested. OK. And so now we're into WordPress. It's already got a bunch of updates for me. It's good to know. Um, 
it's got some in pre-installed plugins, but let's look at what the, the website actually looks like. I am not a WordPress expert here, folks, so <laughs> I'm not going to show you all the tips and tricks uh, for, for WordPress. But you can see here that we've got a default kind of a WordPress website going on here, which is pretty cool. So if you were to go to this IP, um, I think you would be able to see it, but that's not very useful, is it? I feel like it's not really a personal blog site until it has a domain name that you can put on a business card, uh, something that's easy to find. So the domain name that I'm going to use for our website is fields tested and feel free to put this in your uh, in your browser right now fields tested rocks so if you go there you'll see this hello world uh, message it's super tiny so you'll probably can't see it on twitch uh, but it says hello world version 1.0.0 it has a host name on here and what that is is i created this uh, kubernetes cluster earlier if I run kubectl get deploy, uh, you'll see that I have hello web running here. And that's what I currently have connected to fieldstested.rocks. So I didn't have a uh, WordPress up yet. I just uh, deployed something else. So now I've got to, instead of having hello web here, uh, uh, introduce um, my new WordPress site that I'm running in Kubernetes and attach that to my domain name. So now we're starting to get into DNS. And I must say that I am not a network person. <laughs> it's not my area of specialty, um, but that's fine. There are some things that we should think about though as we're thinking about um, putting this uh, website. It's always DNS, absolutely. <laughs> so many challenges that come with it. Um, so there are a few things that we should think about as we start thinking about We've got our WordPress website. It's running on Kubernetes in the cloud. How am I now going to connect this to that? And what I found that was nice in the documentation, I went to Google Cloud's documentation since that's what I'm using. I knew that I needed a static IP for my website. And uh, what that gets me is the ability to connect uh, my my domain name to the static IP in DNS so that anyone anywhere in the world, when they look up fieldstested.rocks, they will find uh, my website. It'll relate back to the, the static IP that will hopefully never change. <laughs> and uh, they'll be properly redirected to my actual website. So I need a static IP. So what is that going to look like? Um, Actually, this isn't even the page I wanted to show. What do I have? I have it in my bookmarks, I think. If I go way down to the bottom. Excuse my uh, Mac bar. There we go. Cool. Uh, so here we go. Configuring domain names with static IP addresses. That's something that I care about and want to understand. And it has this nice little tutorial here on how to use uh, configure a domain name with a static IP address with GKE, which is exactly what we want to do. Awesome. So uh, let's see, what does the before you begin section in here say? Visit Kubernetes engine page, create or select a project, wait for API services to be enabled, make sure you have billing. So this is all of the pre-work that you need to do to be able to do this uh, tutorial that's in the documentation. Uh, we'll need kubectl. Since I'm using the cloud shell, I already have kubectl. Uh, and then it has us install this example. So this hello app example is the one that I have currently connected to fields tested dot rocks. Uh, so we're not going to do this piece. We're not going to clone down the repo for that. We've already got it running. I just need to know the part about uh, the connecting the domain name uh, to the static IP. So where is that stuff? Here's stuff about exposing our application. If you remember last time, if you tuned in, um, there was, uh, we talked a bit about services in Kubernetes, which are often how you 
uh, get access to your applications that are running Kubernetes. That's what we just used. Uh, our tutorial over here, we saw kubectl get services WordPress, and we saw this load balancer type service. Uh, so that's exactly the same thing it's talking about here, using a service which creates in Google Cloud, if you use a load balancer type service, it creates a TCP network load balancer, which works with regional IP addresses. I want my website to be available globally, so that seems like it might be a problem. But we also have here use an ingress, which creates an HTTPS load balancer and supports global IP addresses. So that seems like it might be more what I'm looking for here with my WordPress website, um, as I want it to be available globally. So maybe I should create this HTTPS load balancer uh, and use an ingress. So I tried this for the first time yesterday when I spun up uh, this tutorial. Uh, it was my first time using an ingress in Kubernetes, actually. <laughs> I've used services quite a bit, but I almost never have an excuse to use an ingress. So this is a pretty cool thing for me to explore. So here's the instructions in the tutorial about using a service. And again, this one is talking about uh, creating a TCP network load balancer in the case of Google Cloud uh, with regional IP addresses. And this will be a little bit different depending on what cloud or uh, what environment you're running your Kubernetes cluster in. Uh, but one way or another, we're going to use some form of static IP address and preferably some form of load balancer. Um, do you want me to go over why and all of that stuff? Please let me know. <laughs> we talked about that a little bit last time. I won't go into too much detail. So here we've got some gcloud commands. Uh, so it says gcloud compute addresses create. So this is creating a static IP address in the cloud. That's what I was saying that we needed to connect to our DNS. Uh, so I could do it this way and create my uh, static IP address, uh, which would be regional, and then connect that to a service. And we've got the service definition here, and it's got this load balancer IP element where we would put our load balancer IP that we get from this. But I'm going to skip through the service piece, and I'm going to use an ingress instead. So I'm going to need to gcloud compute addresses create. Put this over here. It'll be a lot easier to see. Well, probably. <laughs> I guess it's kind of behind my picture here, isn't it? <laughs> but it says gcloud compute addresses create Hello Web IP dash dash global. And it could not fetch resource uh, because I didn't change the name. <laughs> I should do that. I'm going to change this to WordPress IP. Maybe fields tested IP. Fields tested WordPress IP being very descriptive and perhaps overly wordy. Let's do that. <laughs> and so I've now created one. So I should have a static IP now, but it's not connected to my actual WordPress deployment yet. So I want to come back over here and grab this describe command. Sorry if all of the flipping between things is annoying. gcloud compute addresses describe. Um, I'm going to change that. The name is going to be fields tested dash WP IP and global. So I want to see what my IP is here and make sure that it's all up. So it has my IP and some information about it there. It looks good. So our next step is to modify, well, actually to create an ingress to work with our WordPress um, deployment. So let's look at that. I, this would be a lot easier, <laughs> probably, if I had uh, used something like uh, Cloud Code and Visual Studio Code, where I had all of these files from the, the WordPress tutorial in Kubernetes um, that I could just refer to and modify. But I don't. I just went ahead and ran them uh, by curling them down. 
So I'm going to need to create, do I want to create a new file or do I want to modify the existing file? Probably doesn't really matter. Sorry, I'm going to find my, <laughs> this is my life having too many tabs open. Uh, so in this case, it has a service and uh, an ingress. I'm guessing the service connects to the ingress. Annotations on the web IP. Oh, this is grabbing the ingress that we created. Interesting. And a service name, hello web backend. So we've already got our service defined. Let's see if we can just add this ingress into the same file that we took from the Kubernetes tutorial. So if I do an ls here, I've got a few files in here. The one I care about is going to be the WordPress deployment. So I'm going to bi WordPress deployment.yaml. And you can see we've got our service here. So I'm going to add a line above that. I'm going to go down and see. Yep, it uses three dashes in between. So I'm going to maintain the same format there. And I went ahead and pasted in the ingress, but this is not set up correctly to work with our WordPress. So let's make it make sense with our WordPress. Um, if I take a look at uh, this real quick, interesting. I think we can just use the same name that we used for our service, but this time it's going to be a Kubernetes ingress object. Um, so I don't think I'll get that confused. Name it WordPress ingress or something. WordPress. And the ingress. Yeah, WordPress is probably fine. The ingress for my WordPress. That makes sense. Um, and that's got labels app hello. And instead, in our service, we have app WordPress. So I'm going to include. So this is labeling the actual ingress object in Kubernetes. So if I wanted to find all objects in my Kubernetes cluster, that relate to this WordPress uh, deployment, WordPress system, <laughs> then I could look for all objects in Kubernetes that have the label app colon WordPress. Uh, so that's why I want to add this label to my new ingress. Uh, it's looking for a, an ingress static IP with the name Hello Web IP, but of course we changed that earlier. So that's going to be WordPress. Uh, no, why did we name it? I can't remember what we just named our ingress anymore. I'm going to exit out of this and find out. <laughs> Fields tested were WPIP. I was like, it's not WordPress WPIP. That wouldn't make any sense. OK, so I'm going to have to do this part again. Uh, insert my three dashes, and then I have copied right now. Perfect. <laughs> so again, I've got to change this. WordPress, WordPress for my label, and then fields tested dash WP dash IP. And that's going to allow it to hopefully uh, find our static IP that we're planning to use for our WordPress. And service name is just WordPress, it looks like. So I'm just going to name it WordPress. Only reason I could see that causing problems would be if Kubernetes for some reason accepts ingresses there, then it might get confused. That would be a very interesting error to see. So I think we should be all set up here with our ingress. Um, now I'm going to have to, did I run kubectl apply before? I did. So I'm going to run the same apply command. I think this should just update unchanged, 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 unchanged. Um, Warning, ingress is deprecated. Good to know. Uh, there's a lot of interesting work that's been going on with Kubernetes ingress. Um, 
Maybe I should work with the documentation team to change that tutorial, but that'll be a separate concern. Um, but for now, since we're just doing a demo, I'm just going to leave this as it is. Clearly, if we were doing this for real, we would want to consider uh, whatever is coming up with ingress, which looks like networking.kates.io slash v1 ingress. So what's being deprecated is the beta version of ingresses in Kubernetes and looks like there's now a, a GA, generally available uh, v1 of ingress in Kubernetes. So if we wanted to use this for real, we would probably want to switch um, that part, which would be easy to do. Maybe I should just do that. Um, might as well. VI WordPress deployment. Should be able to just change this right here. Delete that. Exit out and run the supply command again, and we shouldn't get that warning. Ah, error validating. I thought it might just work. Unknown field. Okay. So <laughs> one of the challenges with dealing with deprecation of APIs in Kubernetes, something I didn't even expect to talk about today. Um, it looks like the new version of Ingress in Kubernetes doesn't have the backend field, which I don't even know how we use. Oh, that's what we're using to specify the service. I don't want to figure out how that's working in the new version of um, of Ingress right now. <laughs> I just want to run my uh, demo tutorial thing here. So I'm just going to switch it back to the V1 beta one. Don't try this at home. <laughs> and I'm going to paste that in and do the same thing, delete that. Um, lovely. Probably uses labels of some sort to do that now. That was my guess. Uh, so I'm going to rerun kubectl apply. We should see the warning again. There we go. So we should now have a, an ingress, kubectl get ingress. Nice. So you can see we've got our hello web, which has an address. Um, and that's the one that we have connected to fields tested.rocks right now. So now we've created one for our WordPress. And if my last experience with running the hello web one is any indication, it takes a few minutes for the address to actually come up. Uh, so. And then once the address does come up, I'm going to have to go to my registrar where I registered the domain name that I want to use, fieldstested.rocks. And then I can use their systems to say, hey, make a record in DNS that connects fieldstested.rocks to the static IP address that's going to show up here. Um, and that takes 30 minutes to propagate for you to be able to use that anywhere in the world. So <laughs> we're not actually going to see this uh, WordPress site on fieldstested.rocks by the end of this. But if you follow me on Twitter, I'll probably post on Twitter and be like, hey, we did the thing. It's up on fieldstested.rocks right now. Uh, I've been debating whether or not I should actually use this website. <laughs> I mean, I could um, and actually spin up a a fields tested rocks um, website for fields tested. That could be pretty cool. Uh, but anyway, so at this point, what else do we have in this example? This says to apply the resource to the cluster. We did that a little bit differently, kubectl apply, and we used our customize file, which we didn't go into a lot of detail on, but it was how the tutorial in Kubernetes did their um, building of all of the pieces in our WordPress application in Kubernetes. And uh, so we did that. We checked out our ingress. And then let's see if that's up now. I don't see it yet. Um, I wonder if it's having trouble connecting to the, if I messed up my uh, definition in here. Fields tested WordPress IP. I hope that that should work. <laughs> it did take a few minutes last time, so that could be all it is. And I could also run gcloud compute addresses describe fields tested WordPress IP. 
just to make sure this still exists, which it does. Yeah, I don't know. That one's not up yet. If it were up, we could go and check out our WordPress on our ingress. Um, as it is, I can at least see it on our existing service. Yeah, which has an external IP here, um, which is how we have it up right here, which should still be working and everything, which it is. So that's pretty much all I wanted to show you all with running a, a personal blog on Kubernetes in terms of how you would actually do it. And the reason I wanted to do this before, if you've seen any of my posts about it, is that there was a, a post on Twitter comparing running a personal blog on Kubernetes to building a sandwich using power tools. <laughs> and I hope that you all have started to see how those two things kind of connect here, um, where Kubernetes gives you a lot of tools that really make a lot of sense for enterprise use cases if you want to run uh, your own websites. But there are a lot of hosting services out there that just give you this piece, just the, well, technically not even this, just the, the dashboard to WordPress, give you the, the access to WordPress. And you don't have to worry about running it. You don't have to worry about this uh, ingress and static IP business. Um, there are a lot of websites that just smooth all of that stuff over for you and basically do all of the things that I just did. <laughs> so it's a great way to learn about Kubernetes and uh, some of the things that it can do well. Um, but it doesn't make a lot of sense to do generally on your own if you just want to run a personal blog. Say you're a restaurant that needs a personal website or something. You probably don't want to deal with all of these pieces. Um, but if you're learning, it makes a lot of sense. So one thing that I could do now if people are watching and want to is to now explore what other things we should do with this. Because I just ran my database in Kubernetes. I didn't uh, put any of my code into source control. <laughs> um, there's probably more that I could explore with this ingress uh, and learn about, which I wonder if that is up. Nope, I probably did something wrong there. Uh, so I'll have to go and explore that stuff later, but I don't want to deal with it right now. <laughs> uh, so we could start to explore these things. What are the topics that we would like to explore more with this uh, WordPress application running on Kubernetes? Um, like I said, I think ooh, I think uh, some of the storage projects in the CNCF landscape would be good ones to explore here. Um, yeah, so and, and the source control thing. Those would be some of my suggestions. Um, do you all want to try to map that out? Maybe take a look at the Cloud Native Computing Foundation uh, landscape and see what other projects we think might make sense with this or are people kind of done? <laughs> we could kind of finish up for the day. We did our thing, uh, which was running a personal website on Kubernetes. Um, and I know how to get it connected to fieldsessa.rocks, but it's gonna take a bit. So I'll update that. Not seeing any movement in the chat, so I think I'm going to stop here for today. Thank you to everyone who joined. <laughs> uh, I hope that you learned something fun, and I'll see you all around the internet. And don't forget, uh, KubeCon uh, registration is open now, by the way. Something that I meant to mention, I should have put in my notes at the beginning of the show. Uh, so if you want to uh, register for KubeCon, North America, definitely check that out. All right, I'll let y'all go. <laughs> Thanks for joining today and be sure to check out cloudnative.tv for the rest of the week and uh, next week to see some different shows. Tomorrow is Rock Code and Pop. I'm sure they'll be awesome. See you on the internet.